Okay, welcome back. So today we're gonna learn more about structs. And in this video, we're gonna learn about struct initialization and copying, um, which is really with the assignment operator. And uh, there's a, just a couple things to keep things to take away from this. We're gonna look at an example, of course. So we can initialize with the um, syntax like this. So we'll see what that looks like, but it's kind of similar to how we can declare and initialize an array. And we can also copy an entire struct with the assignment operator, which is very different than arrays because with arrays, you can't just use the assignment operator. You have to copy things one by one or use something like stir copy. So that's the two things that we'll see right here. And so let's, um, to check this out in action, let's go back to our example with rooms in Hopper Hall. And instead of reading in all this information, what I wanna do is create a few rooms that have some of this information built into them. So I could say um, like HP 103 equals well, so I can just declare this as a struct, and then I can fill in the fields like um, hp103.num equals 103, and hp103.seats equals 12, and hp103.islab equals true. That totally works. When we wanna do something like this, there is a convenient syntax that we can use to just assign all of these things all at once. And it's similar to the array uh, initialization syntax when you have a fixed size array. So we can just say room HP 103 or whatever name we wanted to call it um, equals, and then we just put in curly braces the values that we want. And why is that nice is because here, I'll just say room one to, so we don't get confused between the 103. So room one has those properties. And then this is nice because now I can easily make a few different rooms. So I could say um, like 123 has 13 seats maybe, and it's not a lab. And uh, okay, so now we have three different rooms. And well, what can we do with that? Um, so we can ask somebody for a room number and now we can maybe try to like look it up and it might be nicer to do this with an array but we can also just do this with if statements when we only have a few rooms so we can say like so if desired equals room one dot num then i want to like print out some information about that room so i'll say blah blah, blah about room one And that can work. And we could, of course, have other cases for the other rooms, but let's just think about this one first. So now let's try to compile. That worked. So now it's going to ask me what room. If I say 103, it'll tell me about room 103. And if I ask for like 105, then it, it says error. Okay, so far so good. But now if you imagine us copying this if and then we could make like an else if uh, desired equals room two dot num, then I would have to like copy all this stuff down to here and do that with room two. Maybe that's a little bit annoying. And one way around that when you find yourself repeating something in different if else statements is sometimes to use another variable. So what if if I just made a variable like found for my found room. And then what I wanna do is just print out this information once at the end. I'll make a return an error in that case. So at the end, I wanted to print out, instead of just about room one, I wanted to print out this information about whatever room we found. And now what you might wanna do is just say found equals room one right here. And here we could say found equals room two. Now you should be kind of cautious about that because this is a type that we made up and it's kind of like an array and you know that with uh, arrays, you can't do this simple assignment. It, it, it won't work um, 
to copy all the contents of an array. But with structs, it does work. So with structs, this really does what we want it to do. It uh, copies everything from the room one struct into the found struct. So it just makes a copy of the room number, of the number of seats, and the Boolean value for whether or not it's a lab, and assigns that to the, to the other one. So of course, it's the same as, so I'll just write this in a comment. Um, we could have said, but you see this is gonna be annoying, and it's also not gonna be very flexible, because if I added another field, uh, another, attribute to this class then I would have to like update this part of my code as well and I might forget to do that and then that makes this case really simple and I can easily make this work for room 3 as well so now it should look up any one of my three rooms whatever one I desired whichever one I typed in it'll copy that to this found room um, so I have four room variables total in my main, and then it's going to print out the information about the found room. Unless I type in something wrong, then it'll say it's an error. So this is, I've now made a simple lookup database for some rooms in Hopper Hall. Let's see if it works. I can't spell clear. There we go. So it compiled. And if I type in 103, it tells me about that room. If I type in 433, it tells me about that one. If I type in, I think the other one is 123, that works. And if I type in 125 or some other room, then it tells me it's an error. Okay, so what's the point of this program? And the takeaways, again, is that we can use this syntax only when we're initializing it. So you can't say, if I tried to say, like, uh, room three equals and, and change it to be my office, uh, one seat and I don't know, I'll say it's not a lab. That's not gonna work, okay? That's not gonna compile. We can only use this special um, initialization syntax. We can only use that when we're declaring the variable. So it's, it's pretty limited, but when you can use it, it's nice. When you can't use it, you just have to assign every part of it one by one.